Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded here, and I'm sorry about that, but I was busy graduating college, and that kind of had to take priority for a while. Um, that being said, you might notice a couple changes around here. New mic, new camera, new lights. I'm really trying to rise above that minimum effort look that we've all come to know and love this channel for. Uh, that being said, uh, this is all new tech to me, so if it looks bad, or sounds bad, or just is bad, then it's because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> so if you do, please let me know so I can get better at this. Anyway, we've made it to the end of another year, which means that normally it would be time for me to talk about my favorite games of this year. But 2020's been kind of a shitty year. Obviously not just in terms of games, and just sort of in general, but looking at the list of games that did come out this year, it's a wasteland. Like, I wouldn't be able to find enough decent games to fill a convincing top 10 list. But we're also at the end of a generation. So I figured now would be a great time to talk about my top 15 favorite games of the entire Xbox One PS4 generation. And before we get into that, I do have a couple honorable mentions. Control, Return of the Obra Dinn, and The Witcher 3. All three of these games I feel like could have very easily made my list, but I didn't finish any of them for a multitude of reasons. And I couldn't justify putting these three games on my list in place of other games that I did finish, just on the off chance that any of those games just completely shit the bed in the last act. That being said, if your favorite game isn't on this list of my personal favorite games of the generation, then the only explanation is that your favorite game is shit. Number 15, XCOM 2. XCOM 2 takes everything that was good about the previous game and just improves on it. So making it so that you're going country to country and reestablishing this like underground resistance fighter network is infinitely more fun and interesting than having to play babysitter for all the member countries and hope that they don't give up and just let themselves get murdered by the aliens. It adds a ton of new customization options so that you can really make your soldiers look however you want. You can make them play however you want because there's so many new upgrade tree options. Like you can have a ranger who's basically just a samurai and is cutting down like six guys in one turn. Or you can have a support who can heal people from the other side of the map or who can hack robots from the enemy team and turn them onto your side. You just have so many options and so many tools at your disposal. And on top of that, they add so many new enemy types and mission types that it just stays fresh for the entire game. And it's just one of the best strategy games ever made, period. Number 14 is Dark Souls 3. Again, just like XCOM 2, this is an example of developers learning from their previous games and just getting better and better and better. Um, this is the tightest combat that FromSoft has ever had. Full stop. Adding weapon arts to every single weapon is super cool and it adds a lot of variety to combat. Uh, this game has some of the best boss fights that FromSoft has ever had. Uh, the, the Dancer, the Abyss Watchers, the Nameless King is probably my favorite boss fight ever. <laughs> it has absolutely beautiful locations like the Profane Capital or Irithyll which is breathtaking. Um, and it's extremely rewarding for longtime fans. People who've played through the previous Dark Souls games are going to see locations or hints at characters from the previous games and just have that good, nostalgic feeling. It's just an incredibly amazing game, and it deserves to be on this list. Number 13, Life is Strange. Life is Strange proves that the episodic format for a game can work after Telltale basically drove it entirely into the ground. And there's so much positive that you can say about this game. Uh, the rewinding time mechanic is super fun. The music is amazing. But where this game really shines is in its writing. Getting to experience the relationship between Max and Chloe. Um, 
finding out what happened to Rachel Amber or what's going on with Mr. Jefferson. Like, meeting the cast of characters across Arcadia Bay is such a rewarding experience that I couldn't not put this game on this list. Number 12, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I don't like Metroidvania games, but I love this game. It's absolutely beautiful. Every single aspect of it that could possibly be described as beautiful is. The visuals, the effects, the art, the music, it's just stunning. And on top of that, the controls, like the gameplay, is incredibly tight. It's, but it's still fluid. Like, you'll be constantly moving, but always have complete control of your character at all times. And, as if that's not enough, I didn't expect anything from this game's story. I figured it was just going to be a fun action platformer. But by the end of this game, there are a couple of moments that had me, like, this close to tears. Like, it's incredibly powerful. Number 11 is Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's a Fire Emblem game, so I feel like I don't need to go into detail about how good the gameplay of it is. Like, it's amazing, but this franchise has existed for a really long time, so I feel like that's a given. Where this game really blew me away is in its character work and its structure. So this game is split into two halves, right? In the first half, you're a teacher at this school where you have to choose one of the three houses to be a teacher for, and you can like poach kids from other classes to make your class the strongest class ever. But in the second half, you have to fight in this war against the opposite, the other two factions. Meaning that you spend half of this game building up a relationship with all of these characters who some of them you're gonna have to fight later and it's heartbreaking like all of the characters on your team obviously you love them i played as the blue lions and i would die for every single one of my characters uh dimitri dedu felix they're just so good and i love them but you care about your opponents too so like there was one mission where Ferdinand from the Black Eagles showed up and he was one of the kids who I really wanted to get onto my team but I just didn't have enough time to, to poach him. And I had to kill him and it was heartbreaking. Like, so hard to do. <laughs> um, and I, there's so many other positives about this game to go on and talk about. Like, the music is really good. Um, going around and like, actually building up relationships with each student as like a mechanic is really fun but i think that the best thing that i can say about this game is that it is the only one on this entire list that as soon as i finished it i started a new playthrough because i had to know what it was like to play as one of the other factions if that's not a glowing recommendation i don't know what is we're in the top 10 now and number 10 is Gears 5. Gears 5 is the revitalizing shot that the Gears 4 franchise really desperately needed. Adding the open world sections to the campaign gives you a lot more time to just soak in the world and the world is beautiful. The the deserts that you're in, the the arctic area that you're in, are just absolutely breathtaking and combat is still as tight as it's always been it still feels great great but they've added so many new enemy types like the the warden and the swarm that are just incredibly intimidating and so much fun to fight uh the story goes some places that i would have never expected a gears of war game to go and it handles the the handoff from Marcus as the main character to Kate so well that I don't even mind that Marcus isn't the main character anymore. Like, it's just that good. And on top of all of that, 
the multiplayer suite in the game is so deep and so expansive that I legitimately don't know how they got all of it working. Like, it's a full, typical multiplayer suite with all your deathmatch, king of the hill, all that shit. But then, also horde mode, and also escape mode, and everything feels great. Everything is so much fun to play, and they are constantly adding more to it. New skins, new armor, they just put the new day in there. Like, this game is amazing, and by all accounts will continue to grow and become more and more amazing for god knows how long. Number 9, Cuphead. How could I not put Cuphead on this list? It's beautiful. That old cartoony art style is so impressive, especially when you consider that they had to draw, physically draw, every single frame of every single fight by hand. It's unfathomable, the amount of work that they put into this. And on top of that, the game feels so fun. Like, the combat is incredibly tight. The boss fights are so cool. Like, the, the boss fight with King Dice is amazing. Uh, the dragon fight is frustrating, but so much fun. Um, just the the overworld walking around from island to island makes it feel like it's a real breathing world and the music is chef's kiss like it's it's just the cherry on top of this perfect beautiful unique artistic game that had to be on this list number eight is South Park, The Fractured Butthole. This is easily the funniest game of the entire generation. I don't think there's any other game that even comes close. Um, the entire section in the police station, from the boss fight with Jared all the way down to that other boss fight in the basement that I won't say the name of, uh, the whole bit where you're running away from that giant stripper, like, it's just so good and it both looks and feels like you're just playing the TV show but it's not just like the writing that's good it's also the gameplay choosing how you upgrade your character like picking the different superhero archetypes that your character will embody and combining them in interesting ways is really fun the position based combat is really simple but also lead, lends itself to a lot of depth. Like you can set up combos with your entire team that can take out enemies in a single turn or uh, like kill a boss incredibly fast if you're just smart and you think about it. It's a lot more than I feel like anybody would have expected from a licensed South Park game and it's the eighth best game of the generation. Number seven is Batman Arkham Knight because it is the perfect ending to the Arkham series. The story is absolutely excellent. The way they handle the Joker, the way they handle Scarecrow, the way they handle Bruce is perfect. Like, I cannot imagine a way that this story could have been done better and the combat feels tighter than it's ever felt before like the new gadgets the the way that it flows is perfect and i know that there's some people who detest this game because of the inclusion of the batmobile but i really don't mind the batmobile there's like one section where it's not good it's that one boss fight and everywhere else i think that it's a really great like inclusion it's a great bonus thing for you to do i mean the city is big enough that it justifies having the batmobile and frankly i'm surprised that it took this long into the series for us to get access to it um it, the game is also incredibly beautiful flying through the city and just looking at the lights is one of my absolute favorite things to do seeing the rain like pour down batman's cowl 
is incredibly impressive. Um, it's just all around an absolutely amazing game. And my particular favorite thing about it is how in the GCPD, you, as you defeat villains, as you do side missions, you, the jail cells start filling up. And so you really get this amazing sense of like how much work Batman does for this city, how important he is as an entity in Gotham so that when the ending happens, the true ending happens, you know how much of a big deal it is for everyone. And it's just so well handled that it's one of my absolute favorite games of all time. Number six is The Evil Within 2. I didn't have super high expectations for this game going in, not because I didn't like the first game, I thought it was perfectly fine, but I just thought it was kind of average, and so I expected this to be more of that, but it's so much more. The, the setting of it alone is so deeply interesting to me that I feel like it would have gotten on this list regardless of its other qualities. Just the idea of a world that's created by the shared mind space of everyone inside it, but gets twisted by people who are particularly more powerful in their will. So one area is twisted by this serial killer, and another is twisted by like a cult leader who's an extremely... He's just a zealot, you know? And it's so cool. And the way that they play with that visually where it's uh, the serial killer is this photographer and he'll like freeze people in time at the moment of their death. So they're like reliving the last seconds of their life over and over and over again. Uh, just absolutely amazing and so incredibly well handled that even if the gameplay of this game wasn't good, I would probably still love this game. But the gunplay is amazing. This might be one of the best survival horror games ever made. It nails that feeling where you always actually have the resources you need for any given situation, but you will never feel like you are at all prepared for whatever is in front of you. Um, the boss fights that they put you in with that serial killer, with that cult leader, with some of these twisted mutations are white knuckle heart pounding moments um the story is surprisingly well handled after the first game i had absolutely no expectation for the story i thought in the first game it was basically non-existent but the inclusion of your daughter and what they do with your uh wife is so fun and so interesting it, it's just this game constantly impressed me and I had to put it this high on this list it couldn't go anywhere else number five is spider-man man, man uh, what can I say about spider-man that hasn't been said a million times already by people much more qualified <laughs> um combat feels incredibly punchy and it flows really well and it's just always fun to do the stealth sections where you're picking off people one by one and hanging them off stuff is like the the arkham predator missions but just a lot more freeform swinging through the city feels really good and it's a lot of fun and this city spider-man's new york is the best recreation like almost one to one of a real world location that I have ever seen in any video game ever and might ever see in a video game ever again. I mean, yes, obviously it's like there's Avengers Tower and like that's not in the real world for obvious reasons, but like the fact that people are taking pictures out of their apartment windows in New York and being like, that's what I see every morning. And then there's another picture of Spider-Man on that same building and it looks pretty much the same is it's just incredibly impressive and super cool. Uh, the story of this game is handled 
so well. Like, this is quite possibly my favorite Spider-Man story ever, if you don't count Spider-Verse the movie. Like, the fact that this game made me care about Doc Ock, who is extensively, usually, a really shitty, boring villain, but in this, he's super well written, super well acted, he's sympathetic, he's kind of scary, but in like, not like a mustache twirling villainy kind of way. Um, I wish the other villains got the same level of respect that he got, um, but like him and Mr. Negative are amazing. Um, the, the, the ending, the, the choice that Peter has to make is, it literally had me in tears. And it was really embarrassing because the first time I played this, I was over at a friend's house and I was crying in his media room because it was so emotional. Um, I just love this game. And I don't know what else to say. I guess uh, it, uh, it makes you feel like the Spider-Man. Number four is Yakuza 0. And this is, to me probably the most surprising placement on this list like I put it here and I went is that really where you want to put that and then I thought about it and I went fuck yeah it is because Yakuza 0 is amazing the the plot like getting to see Majima before he's Majima getting to see Kiryu become Kiryu is so much fun and the combat feels so incredibly good every time you pick up a new style it's like it's like a whole new game especially when you get like majima's breakdancer one or uh the dragon of dojima like a final style for kiryu it's just so cool and the fact that you're like having these super serious fights but then like Kiryu picks up a bench and just like nails four dudes at once like it's so much fun it's just immediately so much visceral fun and this incredibly serious dramatic and very well acted don't get me wrong very well acted uh like crime drama story the fact that it somehow pairs almost perfectly with all the ludicrous bullshit that happens in this game like the fact that one second it's like i'm having this sick fight in the sewers with a guy who like is trying to murder me on a on a jet ski or whatever and then you go to uh to a, a bowling alley and you bowl a perfect turkey and a woman gives you a chicken, a live chicken, as a reward, who then becomes a manager for one of your small businesses. And all of that just kind of, like, works. Like, it manages to, to combine uh, drama and comedy in such a perfect way that I don't know how else to describe it. Like, it just... I've never seen it done so well. And... The, the side content of this game is incredibly impressive where like there's like a slot car mini game and a, a fight club and there's all these arcade games and there's like a host uh, or a cabaret club like mini game and a real estate mini game and all of these games could very easily be their own games because they are complete they are entire games they are self-contained, they are fun to play, and they all work start to finish. But they're just a fraction of the content in this game. Like, I don't, <laughs> I could talk all day of just positives about this game and not run out. <laughs> Number three is Persona 5. And you could probably replace this game on this list with Persona 5 Royal, but I didn't play that one. Uh, and even though that one is probably better, this game is still this high on this list and absolutely 100% deserves to be. Uh, and the reason for it is twofold. Number one, 
style. This is the most stylish game ever made, period, the end. Every single menu in this game is so immediately recognizable, so vibrant, so colorful, so well thought out that you can take it and you can put it on a phone. You can take it and you can put it on your home screen on your PlayStation or your background on your laptop and people are going to immediately, immediately, that's Persona, immediately know because it's iconic and it is so unique and so good looking. Uh, the music is amazing. There is not a single track in this game that I have not listened to in my free time because it's so good. Just the, the soundtrack, Rivers in the Desert, Beneath the Mask, is literally the song that I listen to when I'm studying. There's a one hour track on YouTube that you can find where it's just playing the instrumentals of it under the sound of rain falling and it's super relaxing and it's it's the perfect study music if you're ever looking for it um the the character designs every single costume that the guys get um the their personas all the different spirits that you meet look so cool and i mean i know that a lot of the personas are taken from like you know previous games or from folklore or whatever but just the way that they've been stylized looks amazing and then the second thing that makes this game deserving of its place on this list is the character moments it's just absolutely the character work you fall in love with these characters immediately when you meet ryuji and and he's he's coming up to you and ann at school and he's like Hey, are you guys ready for the Phantom Thieves meeting? You're like, shut the fuck, shut the fuck up, Ryuji. We're like, we're, we're and, or like how Makoto, uh, when you meet her, she she's like hiding behind her books, just like following you around because she's like so smart that she's already caught on that you're the Phantom Thieves. Uh, and it's all these little cute character moments paired with all the really serious dramatic stuff. Like, again, Makoto, how, you know, how she feels inadequate because of how seemingly perfect her sister is or um how Anne feels because she's kind of looked down on in her uh modeling industry because she's mixed race or how uh just everything with Futaba just the entire existence of Futaba and her mom and uh is just uh <laughs> like I just you just immediately fall in love with these characters and, it, and not just like the immediate core ones like you'll go and you'll play shogi with ifumi and fall in love with her and the game wants you to do these things it wants you to build up relationships with it and it rewards you for building up relationships by giving you as you progress in these social links giving you new powers specifically with that girl who you play shogi with hifumi she gives you the ability to like switch characters in and out on the fly during combat which is super useful it's like the best thing to get uh or if you build up your relationship with your teacher then she can uh through various means make it so that you can do two things in one day because you know your cat tells you to go to sleep after you've done one thing don't ask it's a long story play the game uh and this game is just amazing. It, it it does that JRPG thing where at the end it goes a little berserk and it goes maybe a little bit too far. I don't mind that. Personally, I think it's a lot of fun. Maybe if you do, then you would put this game lower on the list. But for me, this is the third best game of the generation. No question. Number two is... Dragon Age Inquisition. This might be my personal perfect game. It has just absolutely amazing characters between uh, Colin and Iron Bull and Cassandra and Blackwall. Like every single member of your party and every single person who, who is in your keep feels like a real person even though some of them are dwarves and some of them are elves or whatever they feel real they feel human um the the mechanic of like 
building up your army and sending them out to do different things is a lot of fun and you get to make the choice of like how best to handle each individual situation and you get different rewards based on like oh did you send Colin and his soldiers to do this or did you send Leliana and her spies like which one works out better you know you have to balance you know a show of power with you know getting in without people ever knowing you were there that sort of thing and it just absolutely S tier writing. This game, this world, feels more real than any other game I have ever played, without question. If you see a flower, you can go into your codex and figure out what this flower is, what it's used for, why it's named the way it is. Every single piece of information that you could ever wonder about in this world exists and has been the thought of and is accessible to you. Um, every single asset that is placed in this world is placed with reason. I'll never forget there, there was a moment early on where it's in the hinterlands and I found this house that was burned out and you, you look at it and you're like, oh, who used to live here? It was this family of farmers and you like get their names um, and you, you find some letters between them where it's like, oh, I hope you're okay. You know, there's this war going on this uh, between the mages and the Templars and, and it's, it's getting wild uh, and this house is completely burned down and you go, oh no, I hope they're okay. This house is destroyed, but you look around and there's no bodies, right? And... So you, you're like, okay, so they must have gotten away. What's the closest location? It's the crossroads, right? So you go there, and if you look around, you can talk to people, and they are there. They they made it, and they got back together. And this is a, a story. This, this is not a quest. This is not a mission. There is absolutely no points guiding you to this. It's just... The people who made this world thought it out and made it so real and so breathing and living that every single character, even ones who you may never notice, have entire lives that they've lived in this world that have been re that will react to the things that you do, that you as your character do, and will react to things that you did in previous games that you played like 10 years ago. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Just the, the, the scale that they're working with in this world, the amount of thought that they must have had to put in to every single aspect of this game is, it's mind blowing. It's so incredibly impressive and the the gameplay is also really really fun like it's not the most action-packed thing in terms of like like you're not doing devil may cry combos or whatever but it, it is very much that like old crpg style where you build your character and you do your powers and you set up like you know you can set up combos in a, in a certain way a certain way where it's like uh you know put up the wall of fire and then people shoot through it and now all their arrows are flaming and it does a little bit extra damage like that kind of stuff like it's it, and that's i guess just another example of the the developers of this game thinking absolutely everything through and i and i cannot hammer that home enough like when you play this game if you explore this world it doesn't feel like a game it feels like you're just exploring like the world of a book, like you've just been teleported into your favorite fantasy novel. And the, the world is just living and moving with you. And I just love every second of it. And finally, number one, my personal favorite game of the entire generation, the game that has impressed me the most is Hollow Knight. 
this game is, I think, literally perfect. And I, I know that I've probably overused that word throughout the course of this video uh, because I'm just not good at thinking of words on the fly. But this game, I think, might literally be perfect. Um, combat feels amazing. It's tight and it's fluid. And, and I never once got hit in a way that felt unfair. Every single time I got hit, every single time I lost, it was because I didn't do something fast enough or I didn't do something well enough or I didn't think of doing a certain action at the right time. And you just learn, and it's because it's just so tight and well thought out and, and perfect that, you know, it's just built for you to learn. And, you know, all the different charms that you get that modify gameplay, you basically can choose how you want to play. You know, do you want to have... Uh, little spiders that go around and do damage for you. Do you want to have a shield that spins around you and blocks uh, a little bit of damage? Do you want to uh, build up your, I think it's called soul, do you want to build up your soul meter faster so you can heal more? Or do you just want to heal faster, you know? And you get to make all these little decisions about what works best for you. And every single person is going to have a completely different setup because it's just that customizable. Like there's it just lets you play that the way the way you want to play but no matter how you play it's been thought through like you there is you're never going to i mean maybe some of the earlier bosses but you're never going to just like roll through a boss super easy you know you're going to have to take a couple tries you're going to have to learn um and that's just combat like the music of this game is amazing the song that plays in the city of tears the first time i heard it I had to literally stop and just listen to it because that song paired with the actions that you were doing right before you get there paired with the visuals of that city were just so incredibly perfect that it actually made me have to take a second and just absorb what was happening. Um, and speaking of the visuals, they're amazing. <laughs> like, Every single boss looks so cool. Every single character is so cool or cute and just well, and just perfect, like clean line work. It's so precise and amazing. Uh, every single area feels unique and special and, and not just between the different locations in the game, but they feel unique and different amongst all games. Like I cannot think of a, another area in a game that reminds me of the uh, of dirt mouth that reminds me of the fungal wastes that reminds me of the the green path you know like it's just it's just immediately recognizable and beautiful like just I, I cannot get over the art style of this game every time I see a character from this game I'm impressed even like there's no other way to put it is it just looks really good and man some of those bosses are so incredibly cool uh the the broken vessel uh radiance just holy shit <laughs> and and all the dlc that they've added every single one is flawless i mean that tournament one where you have to fight all the bosses back to back that's really fucking hard and i'm never gonna finish it but i appreciate it because it's so cool and so perfect and the thing that impresses me the most about every single aspect of this game working exactly how i would want it to and feeling so tight and being so perfect is that this game was made by three people three people team cherry is three people i wish i had looked up their names before this so i could read them out and just thank each one of them individually because i i went to school for computer science i have a certification in video game programming i know a, 
probably a couple dozen people who, who write code who have practiced making video games. If you put every single person in that entire class in the same room and said, make a game, you could give us a decade. You could give us two decades. And we would never make a game that was even close to the quality of Hollow Knight. Which is a little bit depressing, because someday I hope I can, but I don't think that I can, because that game is literally perfect, and it deserves the number one spot on this list. There is no question in my mind, the fact that three people could make something like this is nothing short of a miracle. So that's my list. You probably disagree with a lot of it, and that's fine. This is just my list. I'd love to read yours in the comments below. Uh, if you didn't hate this video, then please consider leaving a like on it, or better yet, subscribing to the channel. Your support really does mean a lot to me. Uh, I'm going to be trying to make content more consistently now that I actually have the free time and I don't have to worry about school. Uh, so I hope that I can see you back here again real soon. Uh, and until then, I'll see you next time.